and that's what we're teaching. Right. Because us knowing that Christ is black is what he's teaching is very important. That's us knowing right. we Israelites is very important. Right. Also, us understanding that we have a culture. You and I have a culture. We were born in America, but our ancestors came in from the west coast of Africa, right. where we had a culture. We had a government. We had our own police. We had our own doctors. We had all that. They took us from that put us on the bottom of a ship and forced us into servitude. Now everything that you and I know comes from the same man that did that to us. Look, even how we dress. So now, God wants us to return to our original state. Bring it up. And that's not to say your wife got to dress like Harriet Tubman. Right, right. I'm not saying she got to dress like a slave. Right. She could be modestly dressed and still look good. Bring it up. It's still be appealing to your eye. Because at the end of the day, it's about her being appealing to you. Right. Not me or any other man. Gotcha. Ain't none of our business what she look like. Right. But right now, we can see everything she working with. Right. And she yours. Right. She belongs with you. Well, are you married? Okay. You gotta put, you, you gotta, you gotta get some paperwork behind that thing. Gotcha. You know what I mean? The Bible said marriage is honorable. Okay? When I was in college, me and my wife were staying together, but we weren't married. We had a baby. Right. And my grandmother said, listen, I ain't paying your car note for you to have this girlfriend and your baby staying with you. Right. You want me to continue to pay that car note? Y'all need to be married. Gotcha. She needs to be contributing. You need to be contributing. I said, like, damn, that's kind of cold. Why would y'all take my car from me? But she had a point. Because marriage is honorable. She can honor helping us out as a married couple. Right. But she can't honor me laying with this girl, having sex with this girl, treating her like a wife, but she ain't my wife. That's yeah. right. My family couldn't honor that. So now, in 2024, I respect what they were coming from. Right. So the Bible says marriage is honorable at all. God honors it. God will bless you. He'll bless your household. He'll bless y'all finances. Whatever y'all plan to do. I know you got goals. Pretty sure she got goals. Right. But you want God to bless that. But he's not going to bless it as boyfriend or girlfriend. Gotcha. Because as boyfriend or girlfriend, when you get tired of her, you throw her to the side and you get your new sister. She gets tired of you, she throw you to the side and she get a new man. There's no guarantee there. You understand? Right? Yeah. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So God's going to judge whoremongers and adults. You know what a whoremonger right. is? Right. You know what a whoremonger is, young man? What about you? I know you know. A whoremonger is a man that sleeps with a lot of different women. He's a man whore. You heard that before? Right. Oh, he a playboy. Bring it up. Oh, he a player. He's a man whore. Wake him That's up. what it's called. God said he's going to judge a man whore. Now, what is the woman that you have a child with? What is she bugged out? What if she got underlying issues from her family of psychological disorders? What if she clinically insane? You just didn't know because you saw that ass. She like, damn, she fine as hell. I'm going to run up in there. Bring them up. Your baby come up out of there, and your baby got those underlying psychological issues that the mother had that you didn't know about because you didn't take the time to get to know her. You just wanted to smash something. Right, right. These are things we don't think about as young men in our community. I didn't right. think about it. Wake them up. I was getting it in. Right. But when you come to the understanding of God and God say marriage is honorable, you step back. You say, okay, yes, she do look good to me. But I don't need to try to run up in that thing right now. I need to find out if she's a woman of God. That's right. And if she walk like I walk. Right. Remember, when you read the Bible, does God want the man and the woman to be at odds like you see in 2024? Every podcast you see online, it's the black woman talking about the black man and the black man talking about the black woman. They call it divesting, meaning I'm divested in my community. I don't want to be with a black woman because I don't like the way they deal nowadays. I'm going to get a passport and go get me a white woman from damn London or something. You understand? You don't understand there's something wrong with that psychological mindset? You know, the slaves ship together. She was getting oppressed. She getting her, brand, her back branded. She getting sold. Her back look like our back. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow believers of this faith, of this truth, and Shalom to the elect. Anyway, I want to go into this video with the IUIC, the Purple Brothers in their madness once again to keep you locked into Christianity. Now, first, before I forget, I remember one part he brought out that he said, you got to paper that thing up or something like that. Get the paper on the woman because if you don't and you don't lock it in a contract, right, 
then you're going to have to worry about her sleeping around and messing around. Well, how's that working out? Because women, the poll I see today, women initiate like 80% of divorces. Yeah. Do you really think we're in that time, right, that mindset, or we are able to keep a, a full union marriage contract under this government who gives the woman the right to take everything you have, even your bed, and have another man lay in your bed, right, like this San Cisco say, somebody sleeping in my bed. <laughs> so she kicks him out of the house that he built for him, the wife, and the children under this marriage contract, right? And then some scrub, right? Some Jake, some grimy Jake, you know, that rolls up a hustler or some Jake that rolls up grimy as hell, roll up in your house, right? He's on a fucking bike with no seat, right? <laughs> Pedaling up the street, laying with your damn woman under this marriage contract according to uh, this world yeah right come on now how's that going on with that adultery that's been going on in that IUIC and they taking pictures of the penis pictures and uh, putting it up and blurring it out on the screen for what was going on in the bathroom yeah they was under the marriage contract you know what it is it's not under the Lord now you had contracts in ancient times just like uh, what's in Matthew 22 and 9 says, go ye therefore to the highways and bid to the marriage. The Lord shed his blood, you know, for the children of Israel. We under a contract. Con means with and track is agreement. So we under an agreement. So these scriptures, you know, it is, it is written, even with the law of Moses, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the law of Moses, right? There was contracts that was written you know, through the law of Moses. And then you had contracts from um, the father. And we'll read on some of that in a second. Uh, but Matthew 22 and 9, go ye therefore the highways into the marriage and um, highways into hedges and many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. Then it says bringing them good or bad, right? So come on, man. You know, these, you know, what did Solomon say? See, he think that you can take, you can go to the courthouse get some papers, right, and stamp them up on the wall or put them in your suitcase and then everything's all good because you're under the union, right? Now, it has to be the union of the Heavenly Father, not the union of some judge. By the power invested me, I pronounce you man and woman. Invested in him. What about the Heavenly Father? This proves that this group is a total sellout, man. They're only adopting... Uh, they only use an Hebrew Israelite and they adopt in Christianity into it everything they teach is Christianity and then he says something about sleeping around as whoremongering you know where did he get that from when you, when you lay with women who got other husbands really it goes into the philosophies and the doctrines uh, of what they did that's why in the scriptures it said um, do not prostitute thy daughter that didn't have strictly have everything to do with sex, but the worship of the other gods and then sex and certain things came along with it. If a man had five wives and he's sleeping with all five of them, how the hell is that whoremongering? But yet, and I got the video, that's not hard to pull this up. Uh, he says in Isaiah 4 and 1, right? And it, uh, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Then we can have more than one wife. So then we'll be whoremongers then? Or is this Nate just playing games with the Holy Spirit, man? Right? He understands that there is truth in this, but he's still tricking the people to believe you got to do it this way. But then when Isaiah 4 and 1 happens, you can do it that way. And that, this is what he teach. He also teaches that, why are you in captivity? The HODC teaches this too. <clears throat> I don't know if it was an old One West thing. Why are you in captivity? You can only have one, uh, but one wife. That's what he teach. But we see in the time of, 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 of Joseph in Exodus, the second chapter, when Joseph died, he put hell, the Pharaoh put hell, Ramses the second, I believe, he put hell on the Israelites, and they multiplied. I wonder how did they do that? And they said they multiplied exceedingly. 
You know what it means by multiplying exceedingly? They had wives. Anyway. Anyway, let's go to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 7, 28, 27. Behold, that I found, say, if the preacher counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those I have not found. Right? So this has nothing to do <clears throat> as this group teaching you have one wife. I did a video yesterday on that. One wife can cause you to go off let alone five or six or seven, all of them can cause you to go off if you're not grounded. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Let's go to Genesis. We'll go to Genesis 24. And no, let's go to Genesis 25 first. Genesis 25 and 20. Let's see what this says. See, this is what it is with the bishop, right? The bishop, the general. Maybe we'll get into that a little later. The general wants to be the man. See, when you're dealing with the contracts and the fathers and the parents and the betrothal and, you know, certain things went on, it was always agreements and contracts that was written down, certain things was put in place, you know, so you can bring it to the headship and say, hey, this is authenticated. This is what it was. But this is why the bishop or the general is sitting up here claiming he's the, the head and him and the bishops must watch over other brothers and their wives. I'll be damned if I'm going to be a grown man and I got to check in with some uh, other man to tell me what I should be doing with my wife. Now, this is why we do have churches set up. You got elders set up, uh, men that are set up, right, who've been around and know these certain things and you might come to that man and say, hey, elder or apostle or whatever the leadership is, um, what do you think I should do, man? This is happening, that is happening, and then y'all have that conversation, right? But there's no way I'm going to, all right, bring your wife, and we all, you both going to sit down to the council. Look, you wrong, my brother. Come on, man. Genesis 25 and 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. Did you know Rebekah was about 13? Wait a minute. You guys going to follow the law? In the law, it tells you this. There was nothing against the law. Let me say that. To say that a grown man, why did he say he mentioned he was 40? There had to be a reason for that. If it, if it didn't matter, why did it mention 40? When you go into the research, because of the men, right? When you go into the research, you will find that Rebecca was about 13 or 14 years old with a 40-year-old man. Why isn't this happening in the IUIC? You got to think about that. Some of the men that's in their 40s and 50s even should be able to take a 12-year-old or 13-year-old woman. According to the law. There's a reason for that. It's puberty. A lot of Israelites don't believe that either. Genesis 24 and 62. We're going to read the article, 24 and 62. And Isaac came from the way. Uh, let me go on to the point. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lift, she lighted off her a candle. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took veil and covered herself. Right? Yeah. Okay. See the woman doing this. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebecca. And she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So that would be like a 40 year old man right now taking a 13 year old woman, right, to his mama's house and laying with her under an agreement they would have him locked up and the whole media the whole the whole world would shame him not the whole world but all of America would shame him how is it working out though all these laws that they come up with to protect the young woman and this how is it working out that they sleeping around at an alarming rate they're getting pregnant then they set up the the parent plan hood but you know there's no order. There's no father there to say, hey, you should do this, you should do that. What are you going to do? 
I'm old enough to remember going out on dates with women and I had to meet their father. And the father had to have some kind of agreeance. He still didn't have full agreements because it's still left up to the daughter. You knew what not one going to change, right? But you try to get his approval. Two thousand twenty-four. Uh, you can forget about that. Anyway, let's go to Bible Odyssey. This is what this says: Marriage in ancient Israel was very different from marriage today. Although there is a great deal that we do not know about the Israelite marriage, the biblical texts that speak about it tell us the many Israelite marriage customs were unlike of modern Western societies, right? First, although girls were expected to be virgins when they got married, we're going to get into that too. According to the Deuteronomy 22 and 21, could even be put to death if they were found not to be virgins. Men were allowed to marry multiple women, right? If, if this was against the law, why isn't that in the law? We read the scriptures of Deuteronomy 17, which I went into that. And if a man be uh, shall leave his house and cleave to his wife, and there should be one flesh, absolutely true. But then he had other wives as well. You could have had one wife if that's what you wanted. But anyway, it is hard to know how common polygamy, which entailed a husband being married to more than one woman, it's not hard to figure that out. But women really was in ancient in ancient Israel. Also, the evidence suggests that compared to women, men had more control over whom they married. For example, Samson chooses his one wife um, in Judges 14, even though his parents disapproved of his match. Most likely, girls were married around puberty. Again, not girls, but this is how they stated the the the. the mentality or whatever you want to call it a women today at 13 years old hell at 18 years old it still isn't right you know what I'm saying so they're not bred for that type of lifestyle today that's why we said no we don't agree with messing with 40 50 year old men messing with a 13 14 year old woman no not in this society according to the law of the bible nothing wrong with that right um most likely girls were married around puberty, whereas men were somewhat older, not somewhat, in some cases somewhat, and sometimes very much older, like, uh, what's his name, Joseph, was probably in his 40s, same situation with Mary, was probably like 13 or so, right, 14, 15, somewhere around there. Though unions were generally based more on economic or social uh, considerations, the romantic ones some text included uh, the song of Solomon show the ideas of passion sexual love was also present in ancient Israel right in order to marry a girl you also had a thing called consummation right in order to marry a girl a woman really a man would give her father a gift called mohar in Hebrew that would seal the betrothal between the bride and husband to be so it was a business arrangement right that's what it was Right, it says betrothals was much firmer committed than today's engagement. You know, today you get the man that got to get out on his knees and put the ring on a woman's finger, and then they got to walk in holy matrimony. How's any of that? The root of that is wicked. But this group teaches this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's all the, the general Nathaniel with that 501c3 keeping you Christianized man and they figure as long as he teach what you know keep to keep these Jakes from having different wives and marrying one woman and so they won't so the Margaret Sanger you know mindset can be kicked in no problem <laughs> you know eugenics uh, it, it goes on to say though men sometimes did marry slave women it says uh, Israelite wives were not thought as slaves in biblical text. When you look at the word woman, it just means slave, by the way. But I understand what they're saying in that mindset of slavery. Though men sometimes did marry slave women, some length of time after the betrothal, wedding festivals often involved days of feastings would occur. I'm going to just try to get through this. The relationship between husband and wives was not equal in ancient Near East, including Israel. Today it is. Why would you sign up and get papers, you know, saying in this society, 
that up doesn't uphold anything that has to do with us in the scriptures. If that's your thing, you do that. But what I'm saying is, you can go uh, uh, draw up your own contract and get it notarized, right? Between you and that person, and they give you the option, the ability to do that. Anyway, um, uh, it says. One of the Hebrew words or husband, it says also Lord or master. And men had life and death power over women in case of adultery, which in ancient Israel involved a woman having sex outside of a marriage. And why is that? Because men who had sex <coughs> outside of a so-called marriage, it wasn't adultery because it was never outside. One thing you got to understand is women... Uh, you could see that we were created to, you know, be ahead of the woman. It was ownership, but not in this society. Why would you dabble and indulge yourself in anything that has, to, even to the root core of wickedness, man? Um, men through could have multiple wives and concubines. This is why when you see something in the scripture and they say he might have had a wife. And the people are run with it and say, oh, yeah, yeah, he just had one wife. How do you know he didn't have concubines? You know men's nature. Nobody really wants to admit men's nature, men's testosterone, hormones, and the way we are. They always kind of dumb it down to estrogen. <laughs> no wonder they're trying to give us chicken and, you know, reduce the, you know, that hormone. They want us to be like that. And then you got this man here, these bishops. And these generals and bishops trying to push that ide ideology on our people. Now, if a man want one wife, I don't recommend a man having more than one wife right now. I don't recommend it. In some cases, some not to have a wife at all. But if you can and it works for you, why not? It's nothing illegal about it. Anyway, they could have multiple wives and concubines were allowed. And they were allowed to go to prostitutes, right? Thus, monogamy was a one-way street in this culture. There we go. It's all in the text. This is called biblical odyssey. But you know what these guys do? They go up to some watered-down, uh, newfound text, right, to retrain us, to reteach us a new, another watered-down doctrine. This is the truth of it all, right? That is the truth of it all. Deuteronomy 22 and 20. Um, and 20. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for this damsel, then they should bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of the city shall stone her with stones, that she shall die. So you know what would happen if there were laws in place I was talking to a guy the other day. He was talking about Russia is just a dictatorship. You ain't seen real dictatorship, man. You know, and this is the problem that people can change their their way of life, their alternative lifestyles at ten years old. Adultery running, adultery running rapid. The young women wear what they wear, and they twerking on TikTok. Little five five year olds twerking now. Yeah. See, if this happened, this stuff wouldn't be going on right now, right? That father would lock down that daughter. Give them chastity belts. <laughs> uh, it says, because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. And the father wouldn't have, wouldn't have approved of that. So shalt thou put evil from among you. If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband... Right, then they shall both, uh, both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and their woman. So shall they put away evil from Israel. When you read all of this, there's nowhere in the scriptures that talk about if a man is lying with another woman, right? Another woman, even though he has a wife, he needs to be put to death. You don't see that, and you will never see that in scripture. If a damsel, uh, a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband. Virgin can mean not being with some uh, another man or a young woman. 
and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then they shall bring them both out into the gate of that city and shall stone them that they both die. Why? Because he didn't, uh, she didn't cry out, which means she was already humbled at that point. And this, this man lie with this woman and she's getting it and she doesn't cry or she starts crying, but then she starts liking it. They got to put her away because the whole union has been broken. She was betrothed, right? But if a man find a damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her, then the man uh, that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing because it wasn't, she didn't cry out. I mean, she cried out, right? Uh... It says, no, uh, no sins are, it says, there is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For when a man arises up against his neighbor, he slayeth them. But what still happens, even though that is the case, she has now been used. She doesn't have the value anymore. Even though she didn't cry out, I mean, even though she cried out and she doesn't want this man to lay with her, there's no value, right? It says, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed. Now this man, by the way, may have already had a wife or two or three, right? If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed and lay hold on her, they say lay hold is different than force. It means capture to take the seas, right? And lie with her and they both be found. Then that man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel father 50 shekels of silver. Why? because she wasn't betrothed to anybody and it's a business arrangement as it is and on some of the um, some of the translations do say the R word and in some cases they call it a crime but you pay your way out of it because remember this is property it's kind of like if you stole a car that just didn't belong to anybody but it belonged to the it, it might have belonged to somebody that was for sale Right, and it say it was like two thousand dollars for sale, and he didn't really want it anymore. But he's trying to sell it, and then you just come up and take it. Well, you know what you got to do. You got to because you didn't go into the contract or the right agreement to do it. You got to pay that man back, and plus, you got to give interest. <clears throat> just like in the um, just like in the courthouse today, when you steal, they want you to pay that pay that money back. Right. So it's the same kind of deal. This woman wasn't betrothed, but you know what you got to do? You still got to pay that father because it's still business, right? And it's better than just saying, put him to death because now what's she going to do? She can't be betrothed to nobody. She's already been taken. So what's she going to do now? She going to go with somebody else? So come on, man. And it's still a trap today. Same thing. It's the same damn thing, but in a different manner. Names have changed, but the game is kind of the same. You got these these athletes who come out of college and they get presenting themselves to these men. And these men lay with them. And now they're under a contract. They gotta, they're gonna get that baby. And sooner they're gonna get married, and they're gonna take all their damn money. <laughs> right? It's just what it is. So this group, the IUIC. You know, it is what it is. That's all I have on that shallow one.